I'm still trying to get the water out of my ear um, from from post game, but um, it, what a uh, what a great start to the ball game. Um, I thought that uh, uh, I have so much respect for Keith Ambrot. Uh, what an unbelievable career! Uh, what a way for him to end his end it. Um, great win against BYU. Very, very talented team. I think they'd won nine in a row and maybe 16 or 17 out of 19 or 20 to end the season. Um, but uh, these two guys, um, boy, they made a difference on the defensive side to start the game. Uh, they're two terrific guards I thought we did a good job on. And then we got out in transition. And when we get stops and rebound, um, we can be pretty special. So um, just kind of continued. A um, little lackadaisical to start the second half, letting them have three or four threes. But uh, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, we got Marcus going in booty ball. Um, <clears throat> you know, Coleman got us off to an elite start with his threes. And, uh, you know, Terrence, those three guys, uh, you know, pretty special, pretty special players. Starting right here in the front row, Gina, then there's one also on the left here. Go. Jeremy Werner on Enquirer. Brad, you said yesterday to ask you, what does it mean to get this monkey off your back, the program, and get to a Sweet 16, get to that next step? Well, it's never been on my back. You guys you guys have made that. These guys don't know anything about any of that. I, and, and I treat every team independently. Uh, I think for the program's sake, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. Um, and I think there's frustration that we had a one seed and, and got upset in this very game. But... Um, uh, this program's elite, and to, to not be there in 18 or 19 years, uh, to me, that's more mind-numbing. We had tough draws and a couple injuries, and, and, and you get beat, and, and that's the beauty of March Madness. But uh, uh, it feels good to be advancing with this group. I've said all along, this is one of my favorite teams to coach, uh, if not the favorite. And, and uh, so, yeah, on to Boston. Yeah, Abby. Happy Schnabel, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, Coach Underwood, I noticed you had a moment with Keith Dambra at the end of the game where you stopped and chatted with him. I was wondering if you'd be willing to let us in what you said to him um, and just what that moment was. I've known Keith for a long time and, and uh, um, done clinics with him. Um, so much respect for him as a coach, so much respect for his accomplishments, what he's done. He's always found winning. Winning's really, really hard to do. Um, no matter the stops along the way, uh, whether at the high school level, whether at Akron, um, and then obviously here at, du here at Duquesne. Um, just to, you know, coaching's a pretty small fraternity and, and, and really, really good guy. And, and, and you, you pull for the good guys. And for him to, to uh, be able to go out and do it on his terms and, and have this run is, is pretty special. Right here in front, gentlemen. This question is for Brad. This is a Brad Teague, CSM Sports. Uh, Brad, the, the team got onto a really hot start. What was just the message uh, to the team entering this game tonight? We talked about it. These guys made it a point. You know, it wasn't very much fun being down nine to nothing in a minute and a half. Um, you know, I, I can. I'm to the point where anymore I don't have to say a lot. These guys, these guys are grown men. They're, they're, and they care. And 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 sometimes they care too much. But, um, yeah, they, they made a point to it, and we talked about it. You know, we had to get off to a better start. We couldn't let this team get some confidence coming off their BYU game, and we needed to, um, you know, we needed to make a statement. Left side, gentlemen. Steve Greenberg, Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, I'd like to hear from Brad and Coleman on this. Um, when do seeds go out the window? You're a three. You're going to play a higher seed next for the right to play potentially – the highest seed after that. Do these seeds matter anymore? No. Coleman, you're first, please. Uh, I feel like the seeds don't matter as soon as the ball is tipped in that first round. Uh, uh, I feel like that's evident every year. Uh, I feel like um, as soon as the ball is tipped, anybody can beat anybody. Um, you know, whatever team plays the hardest. Um, you know, and it's a it's an imperfect game, and to to try to base it off of seeds is 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 kind of bizarre. Um, 
because the, you know there's so many great players that play in the tournament, so many great teams, um, and all of them are are chasing that one common goal, and um, everyone's going to compete extra hard. So um, I feel like the season's out the window in, in that first round. Really, it's it's game on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I've been a 14 and one. Um, I've been a 12 and one. Uh, I've been a one and lost. Um, I, you know, I think it's 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 more about how you're playing. I think it's about the matchup. Um, I think it's 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 uh, uh, so many little factors that go involved. I think it's what makes this March Madness so unique. Is you know we've 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 now seen 16s beat ones um, in, in this thing. So uh, you know our task is we've got we've got in front of us a, a, a team that was seated higher than us. Um, okay, we've played in the Big Ten. We've played some of the very best teams that, that the basketball has to offer. We've played a great schedule. Uh, we've been on the road. Um, so, you know, that's what you do all those things for is to prepare yourselves for these moments. Hold on a sec. Steve, do you have a, a, a another comment for that? Let's, let's go to back to him, and then we'll go to the front. So do you guys feel like underdogs now, you know, going against – the two, I mean, according to the bracket, you know, that's how people look at it. Do you feel like that? With Mark, we'll go Marcus and uh, Brad this time. Um, I mean, every time we step on the court, I don't ever feel like an underdog. You know, no matter who we're playing, I think with this group of guys, we can always go out and beat anyone in the country. So, I mean, I'm really not looking at the seeds. I'm looking at Iowa State, who they have, and, and how we're going to win. Thing, I you know, it, it's every game's in. It's when you've got a group that's veteran, when you got a group that's old, they know how, they know each other, they know how to play. I, I don't ever go in. I go in with a with a feeling that of, of respect for the opponent and how good they are and what they do. But I never go in with the mindset that 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 oh, we got no chance. Maybe if we were playing the Celtics or somebody in Boston, I might I might feel a little different. But uh, you know, we we've we've shown we can play with the best. We're under four minutes to go. We have four questions up. Here's one, two, three in the back, and Abby, four. Go. Um, so just what is far you coming up. So you've been a foundational piece for the program. Just kind of walk us through just how you're feeling in this moment. Um, part of me wants to get, like, really excited. Uh, and part of me just, like, wants to keep the jobs not finished mindset. So it's just kind of in between right now. Um, I'm really happy for everything we've accomplished this year. Um, but to sit here and say I'm I'm happy with making the Sweet 16 is, you know, is, is not what I want to say. I want to be happy with winning a national championship. So, um, you know, I, I'm aware of the history because it, it kind of gets thrown in our face a little bit. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think the the goal now is to really go out and do it and, you know, uh, become national championships because that's why we're here. So, uh, here, thank you. It's for Marcus and Coleman. You guys have won six straight games now in the postseason. How do you feel going into Boston about your team, and what gives you confidence that you can compete for a national championship? Marcus, you're first, please. Uh, I feel good about our team. You know, I think we're hitting our stride and, and turning in the right direction. You know, you always want to start playing your best basketball come March, and I, I think we're doing that. So, you know, I feel confident. You know, Iowa State's a really good team, so we got to play our best to beat them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel really confident in this team because I feel like there's still something missing that we haven't reached yet. Uh, I think there's a whole other level of intensity that we can play with, um, both offensively and defensively. I feel like um, there's there's moments where, you know, guys got to step up and knock down shots, and uh, that's that's on me. Um, and there's moments where we got to step up and lock in on defense and, and limit defensive mistakes. So, uh, I'm really confident in this team because, like I said, I, f I feel like we got a whole other level we can tap into for sure. In the back, gentlemen. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from both Coach and Marcus, if possible, here. For Coach, uh, a lot of people say this is a guards tournament. So just how important is it to have Marcus, you know, being the engine of this offense? And was that a point of emphasis to go out and get a guy like him in the offseason? And then for Marcus, just how much pride do you take in making this offense go? Yeah, I, I think that 
we had a lot of ideas when we recruited Marcus. We knew how good a player he was. And uh, uh, between Marcus and Ty, uh, Nico Moretti, we, I've said all along, I felt like our point guard uh, position was in, in great hands. And, and Coleman gives us an unbelievable luxury as a five man who can really handle and, and, and um, elite pressure. So it's not a, it wasn't about having that position. It, it was about taking, being able to put guys in position to take advantage of mismatches and put them in positions to be successful. And uh, uh, Marcus's basketball IQ, Ty's basketball IQ, Coleman's basketball IQ, those allow us to be able to get away with, quote unquote, if you guys want to label it, the non-traditional point guard. He's as much a point guard as anybody that's that's in this field. Um, you know, and the triple-double last game proved that. Can you remind me what my question was? <laughs> Just how much pride you take in making this offense one of the best, office, best offenses in the country go the way it does? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't really consider myself like the engine of the offense. I think that's what you said. Um, when you play along guys like, you know, Coleman, Terrence, and the list goes on and on, you know, we just get the ball to where we want to get it to. Uh, you know, some days that's me, some days that's Cole, some days that's TJ. You know, it's just, you know, we're just out there playing basketball, really. And I think uh, Coach has done a really good job of just getting the ball to where it needs to and allowing us to use our strengths. And I think that's why our offense is so successful because – we just, everyone uses their strengths really well. Final question right here, Abby. Marcus and Coleman, um, I'm curious to know what you guys think you did so well against Day Day Grant. You held him to seven points. Not a lot of players this season have been able to do that. Coleman, uh, yeah, Coleman first, please. Uh, I think it was our, our physicality as well as forcing tough twos. Uh, we try to keep everything two on two. Uh, we try to war over ball screens and uh, to see gar uh, our guards, uh, Marcus, Ty, everybody, you know, take a crack at him. Uh, Terrence, everybody. Um, uh, it, it was exciting to see because uh, obviously we made it tough. Um, and just limiting, limiting threes, uh, crawling up in, in, uh, in the space uh, rather than letting him uh, create with the ball and create his own shots. Um, so I think we did a good job of just forcing tough twos and sticking to what we do. Yeah, I think uh, just our, our size and physicality is something that, you know, they don't – they probably haven't seen before, you know, between TJ and Ty. You know, that duo on the ball, just the whole game guarding you, it, it wears on you. Thank you, gentlemen, and best of luck next weekend. Thank you.